Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast. I normally begin with a little bit of a different introduction, but let me begin with these words. Do you know them? They go like this. Mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. He is trampling out the vintage where the grapes of wrath are stored. He has loosed his fateful lightning of his terrible swift sword. I'll stop there. Do you know those words? I'm sure you do. In a moment, I'll remind you about them and where they come from. Thank you for joining us today here at Bible Tract Echoes. My Bible today is open to two places. I'm going to have you really turn to just one. That is 2 Thessalonians in chapter 1, the book of 2 Thessalonians. If at all possible, get your Bible and join me there. The other place my Bible is open to is open to Isaiah chapter 26. You probably don't have the ability in front of you right now with what you're doing to have both of them open. But if you can, go to 2 Thessalonians and chapter 1. We have been doing a series of prophecy, and we're going to continue that today. Yesterday, we talked about the Battle of Armageddon, and we're going to continue that thought and that understanding of what the Word of God says about the Battle of Armageddon. So get your Bible out, get something with which to take some notes, but I really want to encourage you today to get from us some gospel tracts. I've got one here in my hand. I'll be urging you to get the whole sample packet from us, hopefully because of what this one is all about, but I'll say more about that here in just a moment. Those words I mentioned a moment ago, where which began, mine eyes have seen the glory of the coming of the Lord. You know those words. They come from the battle hymn of the Republic. It is, to be sure, a song of military battle and fierce unleashing of weapons like the world heretofore has never seen. Now, all the images found in that song come from the Bible. They come from passages describing the second coming of Jesus to earth at the Battle of Armageddon. And in a moment, I'm going to read some of the Bible passages which hold the references to much of the things sung about in that old hymn. Again, the Battle Hymn of the Republic is a war song. Let's talk about that war, that coming terrible war where Christ destroys all the armies of the earth. Again, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, if you can, turn your Bible there. I mentioned a gospel tract a moment ago. Now, listen, friend, a gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a means of giving the gospel to people, not only if you can verbally tell them, but even if you can't, because a gospel tract is a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. The one in my hand right now is entitled, I Have plenty of time. I have plenty of time. This track is based upon the story of a real gal named Mary. She was 19 years of age when the track originates. She was invited to hear an evangelist. He preached about how to be saved from your sins through Jesus Christ. When confronted about what she had been hearing that night. She said, I don't have time for that now. She said, besides, there's plenty of time for that. During the next night of those meetings, Mary's car skidded out of control, slammed into another car, and she died instantly. Oh, she thought she had plenty of time. Thus, the title of this gospel tract, I Have Plenty of Time. You know, it's not just teenagers and millennials that think they have all kinds of time. Even those of us in our 60s think we still still have plenty of time. I'm going to live a long time yet. Oh, friend, we don't know what a day may bring forth. 
Today is a day of salvation, and that's the emphasis of this gospel track. God's warning is that death could happen at any moment, and after death, the judgment. If you need a good gospel track to share with somebody, here's one right here. I have plenty of time. At the end of the broadcast, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. And if you'll do that, we'll send you absolutely free of charge a complete sample packet containing one each of all of our English gospel tracks. Please, please, please let you and I become partners in evangelism. That is the heartbeat of God. Amen. All right, if your Bible is open to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, beginning at verse 7, the Bible says this, And to you who are troubled, rest with us when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power, a description there of the second coming of Christ. But again, my other Bible passage here is Isaiah 26. I'm beginning with the last two verses of that chapter, Isaiah 26, 20, reading over into the first verse of chapter 27. Verse 20 says this, Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy door upon thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. For behold, the Lord cometh out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth shall be disclosed her blood, and shall no more cover her slain, her dead people." 27 1. In that day the Lord, with his sore and great and strong sword, shall punish Leviathan the piercing serpent, even Leviathan that crooked serpent, and he shall slay the dragon that is in the sea. Stop, please, right there. Just in case you missed it, these passages here and many others speak about the wrath and fury of Christ upon the world's people, the people who refuse to turn to him to be saved from their sin. Now, this fury and military battle ends up by bringing four armies, four earthly armies from across the world to the land of Israel. The number of soldiers at that battle will be in the millions. This final battle in Israel culminates a series of military events happening in the last three and a half years of the tribulation period. This battle is known best by the title, the Battle of Armageddon. In 1923, a godly Bible teacher published a book on prophecy, and here's how he described this place called Armageddon. I'm quoting now. Armageddon is the name of a small mountain or hill in the plains of Jezreel, west of the River Jordan. The meaning of the name is Hill of Megiddo, but the Megiddo is a word meaning slaughter. And therefore, Armageddon may be and has been translated the Mount of Slaughter. In the eternal counsels of God, this place, Armageddon, has been predetermined as the future scene of the most awful battle in the world's history. In the Word of God, this battle is called the Battle of the Great Day of God Almighty. That's seen over in the book of Revelation chapter 16. Now, that ends the quote there. During the tribulation period, four earthly military powers are going to be present at the beginning of the tribulation, the Antichrist, who heads up a ten-nation confederacy, one of those armies, he's going to bring peace to the Middle East. And due to that, the world will hail him and honor him. But three and a half years later, he's going to break that peace treaty. Due to his rulership, some of the world's leaders who once thought he was wonderful are going to turn against him and against the Jewish people and turn on the country of Israel. Now, army number one in the tribulation period is called the army from the north. You'll find them in Ezekiel 38, and this northern army sets out to attack Israel. This army is decimated by God Almighty himself. But that's not the battle of Armageddon yet. This is merely one battle in a series of military campaigns that make up this thing called the Battle of Armageddon. Army number two is called the King of the South. 
You'll find his story in Daniel chapter 11. Now, the events of Daniel 11 had both a near fulfillment and a far fulfillment. The near fulfillment came during the years before Jesus' birth as world empires unfolded. But the greater fulfillment of this attacking king will play out right before Jesus' second coming. This brings us to army number three. Army number three is the kings of the east, which appears to be made up of Asian nations. Revelation 16, 12 talks about this army invading the promised land. They come to fight against the army number four, which is that army of the Antichrist, that 10 nation confederacy here. Now, the leader of this army is called the beast over in Revelation chapter 13. He heads up, as I said, that 10 nation confederacy. Now here is what appears to happen as things lead up to this ending battle. The beast, with his army, makes a peace treaty with Israel, as I said. During this peace time, the northern army, Gog and Magog, they're called, attacks Israel. That's what brings the beast and his army into Israel. You see, due to the peace treaty, he's going to come and defend Israel like he's supposed to do. But he then breaks the peace treaty and makes himself ruler there in Israel. Due to this seeming confusion at that moment in time inside the nation of Israel, the beast is attacked by these other army. You see, the beast appears to be weak. That's when the armies from the south and the east attack. They come to attack the beast, but they also come out of hatred for the Jewish people. So, at the end of the seven years of tribulation period, you've got these massive armies all centered in Israel. There are far too many to fit just in the area of Megiddo, so they're all over Israel. The entire country is a battlefield. Well, this fierceness and anger of the international powers and armies erupts in their massive armies attacking each other. But with great suddenness, Christ returns Revelation 19.19 19 says that all these earthly armies, they come to make war against each other. They now join forces and turn and make war against Christ himself, but he crushes them with a sword that proceeds out of his mouth. Now, friend, why does God reveal all these military battles and movements that are going to happen during the tribulation period? Now, friend, if this information does anything, it reveals the depth of the wickedness of people and the stubbornness in their heart against God. It reveals the hatred they have for the Jews on whom God has placed his name. All this happens because of, the, of an underlying influence of Satan himself. We're going to look at Satan's influence in all this events on tomorrow's broadcast, Lord willing. Friend, the world will not end because of global warming or cooling. It will not end due to a, a attack of atomic weapons of one nation or another. The world will end when worlds come to when world powers come together and Christ crushes them by the word that proceeds out of his mouth. The day to make Christ your Savior and Lord is today. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.